The Scottish town of Dundee was separated from the south by the great river Tay, but the year of 1878 gave Dundee reason for rejoicing. Her gracious majesty, Queen Victoria, had crossed the river on the newly opened Tay Railway Bridge. This immense structure took 600 men six years to build, and took the lives of 21 during the construction. The high girders and spans in some places reached 88 feet in height and 250 feet in length. The girders, which were unable to be economically manufactured by anyone else, were constructed in a hastily built foundry. The girders produced by the foundry were casted with inferior iron, but their bridge was able to be completed much faster and much cheaper that way. When completed, the designer Thomas Bouch was prided in his accomplishment, received the knighthood, and became very famous. More than a mile and a half in length, the bridge was the longest of the day and was one of the greatest engineering feats of the 19th century. On a cold night, 18 months after the bridge's completion, on Sunday, December 28th, a locomotive of the North British Railway Company was being ready to take the Sunday mail train from Edinburgh to Dundee. Engine 224, commandeered by driver David Mitchell, and stoked by fireman John Marshall, had been built in July 1873 by the Cowlairs Locomotive Works. The regular Sunday mail train engine, the Lady Bank, number 88, had broken down, and number 224 was conveniently at the ready nearby. At Burnt Island, the train collected passengers and mail. The passengers, who braved the high winds, were relieved to enter the comfort of their gaslit carriages. As Locomotive 224 prepared to leave, the stage was being set, one of the greatest dramas in railway history. There were only a few passengers on board when she left Burnt Island, but on her way north, at Lucas and Ladybank, she collected more. By the time the train passed Warmit's signal box, there were 75 men, women, and children on board. At Warmit's signal box, Signalman Bartley checked his watch and sent a signal to the north bank. The train had entered the bridge. The winds whipped round like never before. It was one of the strongest storms ever seen around the town of Dundee, and it would not be soon forgotten. The light of morning revealed what was left of the great edifice that stood proud and tall only a few hours before. Thirteen spans of the high girders were gone, taking train, passengers and crew to the cold riverbed. It was found later that Bouch had taken little consideration into the bridge's ability to withstand high wind, and the inferior iron only made the bridge weaker. Humiliated, Bouch took most of the blame, and died a few short months later. All of his future bridge plans were scrapped. The only survivor of the disaster was Engine 224, which was fished from the riverbed, and after being nicknamed the Diver, continued to work over the North British Railway's trackage for another 45 years. Engine drivers refused to take the rebuilt 224 over the newly opened second Tay Railway Bridge, erected six years after the demise of the first. But on the 29th anniversary of the disaster, 224 got a second chance to cross the Tay Bridge, and this time, she made it. At low tide, the cement foundations of the piers are still visible, serving as a silent memorial to the events of the cold, windswept night of 1879, which will be remembered for a very long time.